everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Sharon, and this is a channel that is dedicated to all things related to narcissism. I've been married to a covert narcissist for almost 20 years. I'm separated from him now, and what I do with this channel is I use my real life experiences to get information out there to people about what narcissism really is, what it looks like, what it does to you, and what it does to your family. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about how your suffering makes a narcissist happy. Narcissists are people capable of extraordinary cruelty. Narcissism is a personality disorder. It's a mental illness, which makes the person who has it profoundly self-centered. It shapes their beliefs and their behavior. They're ruthless and manipulative. Kindness and love is not a part of who they are. It doesn't exist inside of a narcissist. So what does it mean if suddenly a narcissist is happy, is kind? Well, you can see from the title of the video, it means that they have made likely you suffer. Narcissists are very cruel people. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about a few ways that they cause you to suffer and that in return, they get joy out of watching you suffer. It's a very manipulative, psychotic way for somebody to live. So the first one that I'm going to talk about is by giving you a silent treatment, especially a covert narcissist. And if you have been or are with a covert nar narcissist, you're going to be very familiar with the silent treatment. It's one of their favorite methods of punishment. And that's what silent treatment is. It is a punishment for you. Typically, what will happen is that the narcissist has done something wrong. They've lied to you. They've cheated on you. They've done something where you would legitimately be upset with them. Now, a narcissist doesn't put up with that. They, nobody's allowed to be upset with the narcissist. Now, the narcissist can be upset with anybody that they want, but nobody's allowed to be upset with the narcissist. After all, the narcissist is perfect. We, when we were talking about who a narcissist is, we mentioned that they are incredibly self-centered. They have a very big ego. They're better than everybody else. So if somebody truly believes that they are better than everybody else, they're not going to stoop down to another level and feel bad about something they did. They can do whatever they want. They're better than everybody else. They're better than you. So if they cheat on you, well, you're going to have to put up with it. They don't care. So if you get, if they do something and you're upset, oftentimes the covert narcissist will just shut you out. They will emotionally kill you for a time. You don't exist. And if you've been given a silent treatment, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It is excruciatingly painful. Somebody literally ends you. You know, you they, they don't physically kill you, but emotionally they kill you. You don't exist for whatever time period they choose. And it can go on for quite some time. I have had a silent treatment given to me up to seven months one time. And I've heard of people that have gone years. And it's disgusting to say that. And frankly, it's embarrassing and humiliating for me to tell you this. Because now that I'm on the other side of narcissistic abuse and I can see things with clear eyes, it sickens me. But when you're in the middle of it, this is your life and you're like kind of drowning. You're just treading water. So someone's giving you a silent treatment. You might be aware that it's ridiculous and wrong of this person, but you don't have the strength. You don't have the fortitude to do anything about it when you're in the middle of the abuse. And that's really what's going on. The narcissist is completely taking advantage of your weakened condition. Narcissists in a lot of ways are like child molesters. They groom you. They groom you to accept abuse. You know, it's your fault. They, they're wrong. They've hurt you, but you're doing the punishment. And I've said in other videos, it would be like if somebody stole my car and I'm in jail for it. This is what's happening. They cheated on you, but you're being punished. You're being shut down. You don't exist. For humans, it's very important that we're social creatures. You know, we need to be social with others. And when you're talking about your spouse, this is the main person you're social with. And they're completely ignoring you, gutting you. And then on top of that, what will typically happen is, so in my situation, my ex would come home from work, completely ignore me. He would see me. I'm standing right there. But, you know, and this is the thing about a narcissist. They have a way of seeing you but looking straight through you so they can look at you without making eye contact and you see them looking toward you but you know they're not looking at you you really are invisible to this person but nobody else is so if you have kids with a narcissist this is when the narcissist is going to go all out and be dad or mom of the year they want you to be in pain i mean this is this is very deliberate so in my case my ex would come home completely ignore me but focus on the kids. 
Now, typically, when he wasn't doing a silent treatment, he would come home, grumble at everybody, go upstairs and go on the computer for a while, go down in the basement and drink. I mean, this is the type of guy that he is. But during a silent treatment, then he was suddenly really interested in what the kids were doing. Oh, tell me about your day. What did you do? Oh, ha, ha, ha. I mean, this is the type of thing that he would do. And, you know, my daughter said to me recently, she's like, you know, do you remember when daddy would give us the silent treatment? Actually, I'm saying daddy. She actually calls him by his first name now. But remember when daddy, I'll just say daddy, was giving you the silent treatment? Remember how he used to try to be nice to us? So he was basically using us to make you sad. I mean, this is, she knows this. She knows what's happening. This is her father. This is what he thought of her. Somebody's giving you silent treatment. This is what they think of you. It's very loud, a silent treatment. They're hurting you and it makes them feel good. They're watching you suffer. They're watching you cry. They're watching you melt down. I would get to the point where I would beg him to talk to me. I mean, really, it is the most pathetic thing. Sometimes when I do my videos, I say things that I did or that happened to me that are really embarrassing and I'm really upset about it, but I still say it. I still tell you because I really want people to understand what narcissism is. I would literally beg somebody to talk to me, my own husband. I mean, it was ridiculous. I would be crying in bed next to him. I mean, crying and the types of things that he would do, he'd turn the TV up louder or he'd suddenly get his phone out and start scrolling through his phone or whatever. This is what he thought of me. And now remember, he was punishing me for something he did. In my ex's case, he had a real problem with credit cards. So he would charge up not just a few hundred dollars, a few thousand dollars, tens of thousands of dollars on credit cards. I had no idea about it. And when I would legitimately be angry about it, when I found out, he had to punish me. He must punish me. So he would ignore me the most heartless, cruel way. I would be distraught because, you know, I'd be thinking to myself, well, how are we going to pay for these credit card, well, this credit card debt? What the heck are we going to do? I had no involvement in it, but suddenly it was my problem. And then, when, now, geez, my husband isn't even talking to me. I don't have no relationship with him. I can't function during the day because I'm so distraught over the silent treatment. Then eventually he would thaw out. This is what happens. The narcissist will eventually thaw out and then they will act like nothing happened. Nothing. It's just a regular day. So yesterday he was completely ignoring me. I was distraught, barely functioning through the day. Today, here he is. He's home. Hey, how's it going? Miss you. Oh, look, I bought this plant for you. This is what happens. It drives you crazy. You're not, you're not in your right mind. This is not a normal behavior at all. The narcissist is happy. They've enjoyed watching you suffer. It's gotten them on a new level. And then on top of it, because they've trained you, just like I was talking about the child molester, they've trained you. They've trained you. You now take responsibility for things things that aren't your fault. You don't tell on them because you would you don't ever want to upset the narcissist. You don't do anything that they don't want you to do. It's exactly the same thing. That is what grooming is. They've groomed you to be a good little boy or girl. The narcissist is so happy because they've enjoyed this, you know, and they're looking at you and they're thinking to themselves, wow, look at her suffer. This is fantastic. I should probably go a couple more days. Wow, man, this is great. Hey guys, so tell me about your day today. This is what's happening. Make no mistake about it. So you're suffering. They're getting off on it. This is why if you are in a relationship with a narcissist, this is who they are and you can't change them. A narcissist will lie to you and tell you whatever you want to hear. I'm going to talk about that and another thing they do, but they are never going to change. The same person who enjoys watching you suffer is this person that you're trying to hold on to a relationship with. It can't work. The person, the narcissist is a con artist. So just like any con artist, you can't be in a relationship with somebody like this. So first thing, they watch you suffer and get off on it. Now, another way that a narcissist will get excited is when they tell you that they're going to change. So they're lying to you. They're going to watch you get all excited and then they're going to pull the rug out from under you. So for whatever reason, suddenly a narcissist tells you that they're going to change. You know, you've been wanting this for so long because you know that people can change. You've changed. You know other people who have changed. Of course, the narcissist can change. 
And then the narcissist, because they've listened to you, they hear you, they know what you're saying. When you tell them the things that you're upset about, the things that you don't want them to do, they know these things. So if they're in a position, now when it comes to the silent treatment, a silent treatment is different because this is when they can, they're above you. They're not worried about you doing anything. They're going to break you. They're going to hurt you and it's going to be enjoyable. When it comes to them telling you that they're going to change, this is typically when you have managed to get to an elevated position. So they're actually a little bit afraid that maybe you're going to leave them or something's going to happen that's going to upset them. Now, they're not worried about you. It's always themselves that they're worried about. So in this situation, this is where they might tell you they're going to change. I'm going to change, honey. And they're going to start telling you things that they're going to change about, whatever it is. You know, I'm going to quit drinking. I'm going to stop smoking cigarettes. Um, I'm not going to smoke pot anymore, whatever, whatever it is. I'm going to stop, you know, looking at pornography. They'll tell you all these things. This is what you want. This is what you've been asking them to do for so long. Now they're going to do it. And you're so happy. This is fantastic. The narcissist is able to put themselves in a great position because you, a trusting, honest person who believes in change, who believes in other people, who believes in your spouse, is getting exactly what they want. So you're going to be so patient and kind. And then if the narcissist slips up, well, that's all right. You know, you can't expect to do this all at one time, you know. Oh, you know, they're going to quit drinking and then you catch them drinking next weekend. Oh, I know I had a slip up. I'm sorry, honey. I'm, I'm really working on this. Oh, I know I was looking at pornography, but I'm going to stop. You'll see. You'll see I'm going to stop. Okay, honey, you know, I, I'm, I'm on your side. I know you can do this. I mean, this is what happens. The narcissist is getting off on this. They were afraid that you were going to leave them. Now they're in complete control and they don't care what you think or do because now you're not going to leave them. You believe that they're going to change. The narcissist is getting off on this. The narcissist is feeling joy in the power that they exert over you. This is exactly what they do. They're back on top. You know, it's kind of like you are a mouse and they are a mouse trap, right? So here they are. They have this mouse trap. They put this big chunk of cheese in it. Look at this cheese I have just for you, just for you. And they're encouraging you to come over. All you see is this cheese. All you see is the prize. Wow. My husband's going to change. My wife is going to be the person that I know she can be. So you come over, you try to grab that cheese. You try to grab what they promised you. Snap. That's it. They've destroyed you. This is all they want to do. All they want to do is use you to get ahead. It makes them happy. Narcissists are profoundly mentally ill. Now, another thing that a narcissist will do, and it makes them feel happy, is to be cruel to you. So they like it if they can tease you. You know, they'll tell you, they'll make comments about your weight or your appearance or little things that you do, the way that you drive, whatever it is. It doesn't matter what it is. They'll find some way to pick on you because this is what bullies do. They like to hurt other people. It makes them feel better about themselves. So they'll do this to you. Now, when you legitimately don't like it, now, my ex never criticized my weight, but that's because I was always thin. But I'm just going to use this as an example. So let's pretend that my ex is criticizing my weight. So he's telling me that he noticed that I put on a couple pounds over Christmas, all right? So he's talking about this, you know, he'll like put his arm around my waist and say, oh, getting a little chubby here. Well, of course, nobody's going to like that. So if this was the case and I said to him, well, that's really rude. How dare you say that? That's rude of you. Then what the narcissist will do is they'll just say, oh, I was just joking. You're so sensitive. You know, I think you look great. No, you don't. You don't know that at all. But this is what the narcissist says. And then that puts you in a position where you feel like, am I being too sensitive? Oh, maybe I am. Well, I guess I did eat a little bit. And he, he still loves me. You know, he's just joking. He wouldn't mean that seriously. So the narcissist can tease you be cruel to you. And then when you say something, they just say this ready-made excuse, you buy it. And now the narcissist is happy again. And then they can make fun of you some more. This is the types of things that narcissists do. They love to hurt you and then get off on it. Narcissists really and truly love to hurt the people that they're with. It makes them feel important. 
The truth about anybody who's in a relationship with a narcissist is that it's the person who isn't the narcissist that's in control. Now, this is why the narcissist has to groom you. It's the same thing as a child molester, right? If somebody's molesting a child, all the child has to do is tell somebody and they're going to get in a lot of trouble. But they convince the child that they shouldn't tell, that they can't tell bad things will happen to them. It makes the child feel that they're not in control. There's nothing they can do. They're completely helpless. They have to just suffer in silence. Of course, it's not true, but you, the child doesn't know that. They're innocent in this. They're a victim. This is what's happening to people who suffer narcissistic abuse as well. They're victims. You don't know. You believe this person. This person, the narcissist, tricked you from the very beginning of the relationship. The person you met is not real. They're not a real person. They're a pretend person. They pretended to be a certain way so that you would fall for them. Now, for as long as they can string this relationship along, they're going to hurt you. It will be eternally. You're going to be in this constant circle of pain with a narcissist. You know, they'll build you up, push you down, build you up, push you down, build you up, push you down until you have the strength to recognize, you know what? I am stronger than this. I'm better than this. Nobody's going to treat me this way. Once you get to that point, once you see who the narcissist is, never unsee it. Being with the narcissist means that you live in hell and you can't get out of hell without getting out on your own. The narcissist is never going to change. They're never going to release you. They're never going to open the door and let you go. They will always make you suffer. Now, it is possible that the narcissist will leave you for somebody else, but if they leave you for somebody else, when you're in the middle of the abuse, you're going to feel horrible. It's going to be excruciatingly painful. So no matter what happens, if you are not the person to have the nerve to get up and leave the relationship, it's going to be an endless cycle of pain for you. Once you see the truth, you need to make plans to get out narcissists are so mentally ill they're so impaired there's no humanity in this person you know i was talking to my best friend the other day and he told me he's like you know there's something they're not human they're not like everybody else he's right i mean he was joking he was calling them a thing you know and it was funny but it's true you know there's something you can't put your finger on it there's something off with these people and it's that they don't have a soul something is missing inside of them so they can't have a life with another person that all they do is try to take from other people they're they're leeches they're parasites so being in a relationship with somebody like this is going to destroy you but understand what they're doing they are enjoying hurting you I mean that's psychotic behavior somebody that gets off hurting other people and this is your spouse this is the person that's supposed to take care of you and love you no if this is your life Please get to the point, work to get to the point where you understand what is really happening. They can't change. When you have hope that a narcissist is going to change, it makes your life that much harder. And I'm not trying to be a killjoy here because I know there'll be some people that say, well, yeah, but some, some narcissists do change. Some can change. Mine's going to be that one. There's not one person who is in or was in a narcissistic relationship who hasn't believed that at some point. But once you understand truly who this person is, you will understand that your only chance of happiness, your only chance of a good life is outside of the relationship. Now, now that I'm on the other side of narcissistic abuse, I have a freedom that I can't even contain. I'm so joyful with this freedom. You know, I've met some wonderful people. I've met an amazing man. You know, I'm in love. I, I can feel this. You know, it's, it's wonderful. Everybody can get, the, get there too. You just have to have the courage. I know it's a hard thing. I'm not trying to just say, well, just have the courage. But if you can have the courage, if you can find your voice, you will see there's nobody, no one who has left a narcissistic relationship and regretted it is really what it comes down to. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm so grateful for everybody who watches my videos. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. I make videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on all things related to narcissism. So if all goes well, I will see you in Friday's video. God bless.